Hey, what's up? It's me, Jen again, and today I want to talk to you all about thyroid biopsies. Having a thyroid biopsy can seem scary, but they're really just a diagnostic tool that doctors use to rule out cancer. And hopefully, by the end of this video, you won't be too nervous about having one done. And if you're new to this channel, please take a moment to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon because navigating life with nodules can be a nightmare. And if you need a DPS, this channel can be your guide. Let's get started. Most of the time, when people first get diagnosed with thyroid nodules, their initial thought is to panic that they have cancer. Try to think of thyroid nodules less as something scary like cancer and more of something annoying, kind of like unwanted body hair. Most people have it. They probably wish they didn't. They would like to get rid of it and it's probably not going to kill them. Okay, so it's not a perfect analogy, but you get my point. Let's walk through a typical diagnostic process of how you become diagnosed with nodules and end up at the point of getting a biopsy. Step one, the doctor fills your neck and feels something is in there and decides I need a better look at what's on the inside. Step two, an ultrasound is performed. This allows the doctor to see everything inside of your neck. They take measurements of the thyroid and any nodules that are there and also they note any characteristics of those nodules. Step three, do you need a biopsy? If you have nodules and they meet certain criteria, then you might just need one. Inside the green square, you'll see the types of nodules that need to be biopsied. FNA is just an acronym for fine needle aspiration or another term for biopsy. Pause the video if you'd like to see this chart for a little bit longer. Step four, a biopsy is performed. Now, if your nodules are fluid filled cysts, all it is is a syringe drawing out the fluid. But if you have solid nodules, the cells have to be extracted using a repetitive pulsing motion of the needle. This is done to dislodge the cells and then the cells are extracted through the syringe. In either case, the doctor will take several samples to make sure there are enough cells to analyze. Step five, wait for your biopsy results. This usually takes a few days and the doctor's office should tell you how long you'll have to wait. Now statistics tell us that 95% of nodules are benign, which means that 5% are not. But in biopsies, about 5 to 10% of the time, you don't receive either result because unfortunately, you have what's called a non-diagnostic biopsy. All this means is that there simply were not enough cells to analyze and that you'll have to have a repeat procedure in a few months after the inflammation goes away. Non-diagnostic biopsies are not indicative of cancer. They're just something annoying that happens from time to time because it happens. My first thyroid biopsy was in 2014 on a cystic multinodular goiter. Now, I was pretty nervous going into this procedure because I had no idea what to expect, but thankfully the doctor was very kind and the procedure was not very painful. My second biopsy was in March of 2019 on a solid nodule, and this time the doctor used that repetitive pulsing motion I mentioned before. It felt a little bit strange, but it was really not painful and it was over very quickly. And my third biopsy was in June of 2019 on a small solid nodule. Again, the doctor used a pulsing technique. It felt a little strange. And on this occasion, I did not have any pain medication. It was a little bit painful, but it was tolerable. I took some time on Facebook to ask how people felt about thyroid biopsies. And most people said that they were pretty scared of the procedure itself. Now, I hope that I could put your mind at ease a little bit here by telling you that I felt the same way going into my first biopsy, but really the worst part was getting the numbing shot. That felt a little bit like a bee sting, and once that was over, I didn't feel anything but pressure. Afterwards, you might be a little bit sore, but it's well tolerated by most people. If you're really anxious about it, some doctors may even give medicine to help with the anxiety. If that's a big concern for yours, definitely ask about it. 
Some people were just fine with the procedure itself, but the waiting for the results was what got them. And unfortunately, there's not much that you can do about this except for ask your doctor how long you should have to wait for your results and try not to stress. Remember that the statistics are in your favor here. And finally, some people are just scared of the unknown. If you aren't sure where this biopsy might lead you, here are some of the possible outcomes. The first option is to just watch and wait. Periodically, you'll check back in with your doctor and he'll take another look. According to this study, nodules mostly remain stable, cancer diagnosis is very low, and cancer survival rates are very high. Option number two is thyroid surgery to remove half or all of the thyroid gland. This results in partial or total loss of thyroid function, and it's used in cases with compressive symptoms, nodules that produce hormones, and in thyroid cancer. And the third option are non-surgical procedures called radiofrequency and ethanol ablation. These are non-surgical and minimally invasive procedures that are used to shrink nodules, but they preserve thyroid function. To learn more about these procedures, up here is a video on RFA, and down there is a link to an article on PEI. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I've had radiofrequency ablation done on my nodule, and I am feeling so much better. That's in another video right here. Now, if you go to your doctor and ask about these procedures, they may not know what you're talking about. That's because these are relatively new in the US, but they've been around for a lot longer overseas. If you're starting to feel a bit overwhelmed, never fear, I have created a Facebook group for the purpose of educating people more about these two procedures. It's called Thyroid RFA and PEI Testimonials. The link is in the description. In this group, we have all kinds of resources, including case studies and articles, all kinds of helpful information about these procedures and how effective they are. And most importantly, we have lists of doctors who perform these procedures. More and more are being added every week. It's very exciting. Take a look. If you're researching these procedures, Take a look at these videos right here, and hopefully now you're less nervous about going and getting that biopsy. Remember, you only get one body and one life, so choose wisely, do what's best for your health, and always be your own health advocate.